Welcome to Munger Vision on Peg TV Channel 15. It's time for American Legion Baseball, and I'll tell you, the heat of the summer sure feels like it's Legion Baseball season. A very warm evening here at beautiful St. Peter's Field, and of course, American Legion Post 31 on the field first. It's Matt Sharon on the mound. He'll be throwing to Ryan Carter behind the dish. That'll be your battery. And of course, Post 31 will be having their familiar red, white, and blue uniforms on, and their opponent tonight will be Bellows Falls, last year's Vermont champions, and a uh, just a Dream season for Bellows Falls, able to win the Southern Tournament and then win the uh, the whole state title and go on to play in the uh, the big tournaments. So it should be an interesting ball game tonight. And I'll set that defense for you for post 31. Big Garrett Brewer is over at first base. Chris Parker, the very versatile and talented Chris Parker is at second base. Rob Dorian's a shortstop. Jeff McLaughlin back and good to see him. He's at third base. Ricky Tao is in left field. And if I mispronounce that name, I think I did it all through his grade school and middle school. I'll work on it if I got it wrong. Believe me, I will. Chad Ryan's in center field. John Holtman, he'll be your right fielder. Batting order, looks like this for Bells Falls. Justin Beebe will lead things off. He'll be the center fielder. And Dave Lockerby will bat second, play second base. Andy Lacrosse will be the shortstop. He'll bat third. And the cleanup spot will be the catcher, Warner Clark. And we're set to go, scheduled for seven innings. And there is just a very slight breeze blowing in from center field into the hitter's face. Matt Sharon in his second year Legion ball, made his college team this year. Matt graduated last year from Mill River and went on to play college ball. And that was, that was good, that was excellent for a uh, freshman in college to be able to do that. It was on a team that made cuts. We actually had to make the team. And he had a great year in Legion ball last year. And I would expect Matt to have a great year this year. And there's a strike from him. And again, Legion Baseball and Peg TV and Munger Vision all go together all summer long. I'll have the games for you, all their home games. And I might be persuaded to take a trip on a couple of the closer away games. That's going to be Chop, the shortstop. Dorian charges. It's going to be a tough play at first. And he's going to be safe. He's going to have a little chopper, slow roller. It played well by Dorian. He charged it and threw it. But that's going to be unofficially, in my book, an infield single. And I'll be able to run at first base for Dave Lockerby now. And of course, the field in just outstanding condition is always here at St. Peter's Field. It's Mickey Kelly and Johnny Chaffee and the crew. Always keep it going in great shape. That infield, the grass, the outfield looks good. And again, great place to come watch a ball game. You can sit in the shade. You can sit behind base. You can come out here in the bleachers and take in the game. And there's not a bad seat in the house. You really got to get out and watch some Legion baseball this year. And from the stretch for the first time tonight, Matt Sharon. Looking small ball, popped up, and McLaughlin just couldn't get there. So it'll be a strike on a popped up attempt on a bunt. You can post 37 in those yellow uniforms at the plate hitting. We're in the top of the first. Peg TV's website's an easy one to remember. It's www.pegtv.com, and that peg stands for Public Education and Government TV. Oh, nice pitch. There's a throw down. Oh, nice throw down by Carter, and he just missed getting them. The pitch, I do believe, was called a strike also. Yeah, it's 0-2 on the board. So a close play at first. Now 0-2, and it's not automatic, but usually they'll take the bunt off with 0-2. And... Good night. Adios. Hasta la vista. See you later. And that big, sweet curveball of... Matt Sharon's gets him for a strike out number one, out number one of the inning, and Andy Lacrosse up with Warner Clark on deck. And basically that infield's just playing straight up right now. They're just, uh, actually they're playing rather shallow too. So we'll see what they want to do here. Is Ryan Carter, good catch here behind the plate, flashes his sign, he'll set up on the outside corner, and that's going to be chop. I think it's too slow for a double play. Yeah, they're going to have to go for one. McLaughlin, oh, what a beautiful play by McLaughlin. I'll tell you, that is a big league play by a big league guy right there. McLaughlin charged it. You could see how he had to throw it, just catch and throw it over the head, and he got the out. Two down here in the top of the first runner. Does advance to second base. <laughs> now Warner Clark up, and again, he hits in that cleanup spot. Ryan Lolly, the pitcher on deck, if they do get to that position here in the batting order. <laughs> And that American Legion schedule. And we're going to talk about some signs here as Carter wants to come out and talk to his pitcher, Sharon. <laughs> I already told you about Peg TV, but Munger Vision, Jerry Munger. I bring you the games. It's, 
it's with a heavy heart tonight that I do it. And just mind you know, Munger Vision isn't just me staying up here behind the camera, volunteering my time. It's just a lot of people. And my wife was 99% uh, of Munger Vision, all the inspiration and being unselfish, let me do the games. But I'm dedicating this game in her memory tonight. She passed away. And you can see the play on the wild pitch. The batter will, the hitter, nope, the runner will advance down to third base. So, and it'll put a runner in scoring position. My wife loved Legion baseball and all the sports, but she really was a baseball fan, Red Sox baseball and Legion baseball. And that'll be high, caught the plate, but high. So at two outs, Bells Falls has a runner at third base. He got there via an infield single. And on a slow chopper by the next batter, he was able to advance to second base. And then on a wild pitch, he's at third. And Matt Sharon going to go right back to that full windup. I like to see that with two down and a runner on third. Yeah, getting a little uh, in tight right there at that pitch. And he's run the count now to three balls, no strikes. He does have a strikeout in this inning, but he has not given up a walk yet. He's at a 3-0 count right now. And that's going to be out from the shin guard to Carter, and he's going to be out, I believe. Oh, he's going to be safe. Okay, it was a close play. And so that will allow the game's first run to come home as Justin Beebe will score. And also that was ball four, and the runner will go down to first base. So we've had quite a uh, experience here in his first inning with an infield single, a strikeout, wild pitch, got the runner to third, and wild pitch got him scored. And now Ryan Lolly up, and like I said, he'll be the pitcher to start the game for Bellows Falls. They up, they're up, they are up one to nothing right now. And Sharon looks, Carter holds. They won't get the call. It'll be ball one. Again, that defense is Brewer at first, Parker at second, Dorian's at short, McLaughlin at third, Tao, Ryan, and Holtman in the outfield, and Ryan Carter is behind. That's going to be safe. A good close play. Nice throw from Sharon. He's got a good move anyways to first base. And you see him peering in and got the look, got the throw, and going to be back safe again. He's really concentrating on that runner over at first base. There are two down. one nothing Bells Falls. And second home game of the season for Rutland Post 31. They played... Greenville, and that's, well, fall back. Just missed getting the umpire. They lost in a non-league game to Greenville post-323. Rutland did one to nothing. So we'll go back, set the count at one ball, one strike. And you see Brewer put the, the tag on. He was back safe, and now Sharon back on the rubber. Now, Post 31's got a busy weekend coming up. They've got back-to-back uh, -back double headers, and I know I'm taped late and all, but I'm just trying to set the scene for... There's a strike, there's the throw down, and just did miss him. Good attempt by Parker to make the sh sh throw short coming in front of the bag and trying to sweep with the tag coming back, but pitch was called a strike. It's one ball, two strikes. The runner does get over to second base in scoring position. And Bellows Falls, last year's state champions. Being real aggressive on the bases, and I like that. Both 31 will also be like that when they get up to hit. You'll see them when they get base runners on, they'll move it. And I'll make it a 2 2 count now from Matt Sharon. Again, besides pitching, you'll see Matt play a shortstop this season and a very good shortstop. That's to Matt Sharon. He'll flip it over to first, and that's the inning. But Bellows Falls will pick up a run, and at the end of the half inning of play, it's 1 nothing Bellows Falls. Well, and we'll see Bells Falls take the field defensively for the first time this evening. And they're going to have Ryan Lolly on the mound and Warner Clark behind the plate. And they'll be looking at the leadoff batter, Rob Dorian, followed by Matt Sharon, Jeff McLaughlin, and Ryan Carter will hit in that cleanup spot. And you can see he's a lefty, obviously, the pitcher. And nice movement on the ball. And that'll be strike one. First base is Justin Spaulding defensively. And talking about Bells Falls, Dave Flockerby is at second. Andy LaCrosse is at short. Quentin Young is at third. That's fall off for strike two. The outfield and... Right field has Ty Goldman Peak out there. Justin Beebe is your center fielder, and CJ Hudson is your left fielder. 
And you're all caught up to date. It's one nothing in the bottom of the first. Bells Falls. That one just slipped out of his hand. A lot of perspiration on the hands tonight. Like I said, it is summer, and it actually feels like it now. Legion baseball schedules. You can give Legion, the Legion on Washington Street actually a call, or you can look in the Rutland Herald, and they'll have the schedule. And I'm sure if you listen to the radio, they'll also be telling you the days the games are being played. So a lot of ways you can know when the baseball games are on. And really, it's a great thing to come watch. Oh, in the hole, a great stop to throw. Oh, what a play. What a play. And Dorian's hard to get like that because he's got great speed. I mean, there's just no way they could have gotten him. I mean, but to play it short and then to scoop it first, almost an impossible way to get Dorian. So they're going to have a runner, just like Bells Falls did with an infield single. Rob Dorian will be on at first base. And again, he gives you lots of options at first base. Good base runner, good steel man to steal with, uh, hit and run guy. You got a good guy at the plate. And Matt Sharon, he handles the bat well. He can drive the ball to the gaps. So, you know, a lot of options here. And actually, the outfield backed up quite a bit, about eight steps when Matt Sharon came up to hit. I guess I know about Matt. That'll be outside for a ball. So each team able to get a runner on with an infield single. And again, I'm unofficial when I call these things hits and not hits and errors, okay? And again, we're scheduled for seven. There's a couple double headers coming up. And it's tape delayed, so probably still relevant to you, but I could mean I won't get in it on time. They got him. They made a move over, and they got him in a pickle play, and he's going to be out at second base. All those lefties all have such sweet moves from the mound. You know, I think Dorian did the right thing. when, when the, Once the pitcher went to first, he just said to heck with it and ran to second. So now there'll be nobody on base for Matt Sharon with a 2-0 count. And had a lot of movement on it again, but outside. He's got nice velocity on the ball, too. I can hear the pop up here in the glove. I'm sure you can't because I have very inexpensive equipment that wouldn't pick that up, but... He's catching and firing. He's not taking a lot of time between pitches, and I like that. And that one's right down the pipe, and that's your typical 3-0 pitch. Usually the best pitch to hit in the sequence when you're down 3-0. He took it for a 3-1 count, and you can see you see Lolly already caught the ball, and he'll walk Matt Sharon, and Sharon, same qualities as Rob Doring. I mean, the guy can, you can hit and run with him, you can straight steal with him, and I mean, there's a lot of good things you can do out there. And Jeff McLaughlin up now, and again, he's... Just a pure hitter, an outstanding hitter up in that number three spot. He's got a man on first one down, and Rutland Post 31 trailing one to nothing. And again, the outfield playing pretty much straight up for him. They're not shading left or right. And boy, I'm telling you, the pitch just really sails up in a way. It's got, it was out of the strike zone, but man, he got some movement on that thing. All those lefties seem to be just blessed with that type of movement on, pitch, on their pitches. He'll get the call on that one. Nick, the outside corner, tickled it for a strike, and it'll be one ball, one strike. And again, fastball outside, swing and a miss by McLaughlin. That'll make it a one-two count. Again, post-31, a lot of home games this year. They've expanded the schedule to 27 overall games. So there's going to be more baseball to watch. And then the Southern Tournament, I want to just double-check my schedule, but I believe it's right here at Rutland this year. And that'll be fouled. Just enough of it to stay alive for that two-strike count. One and two, the count. But one thing you really want to remember about St. Peter's Field, besides being the best fielders to watch football or baseball from, is if you're the left fielder, third baseman, shortstop, and even the center fielder, you've got some nasty sunshine to look up in right now at this time of night. The sun is just brutal. On fly balls hit that way. McLaughlin will ask for time as Lolly took a long time between pitches and see McLaughlin step out and get all set here. And again, Tony Sorelli, the head coach at post 31. And that's going to be put into play. One play, and that's the first, and they'll get him. So with two down, they get the runner to the second base. And Sharon, you know, a lot of it depends on how hard and how deep a ball's hit, but with a single, he's got the kind of speed that he could make it home. Now Ryan Carter up, and he represents a lot of power in their lineup. I have seen Ryan, when he played for the Rutland County Royals and for MSJ Baseball, leave the yard, as they say in professional lingo. And they'll be careful with him. 
I mean, I don't think you're going to pitch around them, but there is always the notion that first base is open if you want to be really particular on what you throw them. And he won't get the call on that. That one was too far outside. It'll be two balls and no strikes. If Carter can extend this at bat and get on base, Chris Parker is on deck and he'll be hitting next. Post 31, looking like they're going to have a good team again this year. And I, I think overall, when you look at the the whole Southern League, there's a strike. You know, you've got, of course, your Bennington's, your Brattleboro's, your Rutland's, your Post 67 from Chester, Bellows Falls. I mean, this is going to be a competitive, fun league to come and watch. And it's really, I don't see how you can pick any favorites. He'll swing through that one for a strike two. So quickly, that uh, leaving the count up at two balls, two strikes. Two down, runner at second base. So a lot of deuces there for post 31. Mm. The pitch. And he puts that into play, and it's going to be the shortstop. He'll double clutch and get him. That's the inning. They'll strand one. And going into the second, whoops, let me bring the camera down here. It'll be Bellows Falls 1 and Rutland Post 31 0. Well, Bellows Falls will be sending their left fielder, CJ Hansen, up for the first time in the ball game in the top of the second to face Matt Sharon. Again, Sharon pitched, I thought, pretty well. He had a strikeout, a walk, an infield single, and a couple wild pitches, but it's early season action. And a lot of pitchers start strong and then kind of fade at the end. And some pitchers struggle early on and then kind of really find their stuff. And Matt, right now, he he's looking to get settled in and find his rhythm. And that was a pretty good pitch to start on right there. Just a real mean fastball that went right by the hitter on a swing and a miss. Strike one to Hodgson. And again, Sharon, right-hander, obviously, went breaking ball. Yeah, you know what I think, too, and, 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 and I love Matt as a player, it's just I think he's hasn't really established a pitch yet. You've seen him really throw a lot of different pitches, and he hasn't really established one solid pitch yet. And I think when he does that, he'll probably be okay for tonight. He'll be okay anyways, but I thought that had some good action on it right there. I'm not sure if that was his slider or his cut ball, but... You'll make it a 1-2 count. We're in the top of the second scheduled for 7 on Munger Vision on Peg TV Channel 15. Legion baseball season, baby. It's time to play ball. A lot of games this year. Like I said, the all oh, great. There's a strikeout. Carter will pick it up, flip the first, and Sharon will have his second strikeout of the ball game. See, good job by Carter, too. Ryan behind the plate to get around that and not take that for granted. Justin Spalding up now, the first baseman for Bellows Falls post 37. And again, you know, you look through the league and of course I'm no expert. I just watch a lot of this stuff and tape it, but I, I just don't see a clear cut division winner or somebody would say is the real favorite this year coming out of the South. It's a lot of parody, a lot of good ball teams. There's a strike. And, of course, we've seen over the years that that number one seed means squat come playoff time. As Sharon will get set, and he will go to the windup. The target is on the outside corner, and just dropped off too soon. Got the plate, but it was a little bit low by the time it actually crossed the plate. Again, warm evening, and that breeze, if it's not really going to be a factor, but it is blowing in from center field into the batter's face. It's... Very gentle breeze, actually. And Matt Sharon will miss slow again. And see, he's kind of just nibbling right now. He's got one down, nobody on base, but they count at two balls, one strike. And again, it's Garrett Brewer at first base, Chris Parker's at second, Rob Doring's a shortstop, Jeff McLaughlin is at third base, and behind the dish, Ryan Carter. Yeah, it's going to be picked up by McLaughlin. He'll fire and get it. McLaughlin's pretty much automatic now when the ball's hit to him over there. I don't really get very panicky when the ball's hit to him. I don't know. Usually he's going to take care of it. So a 5-3 ground out. Now Quinton Young, he represents the number eight hitter in the order. So Bellows falls with two down, nobody on, but they do have that one to nothing lead. Don't forget Channel 15 Sports Saturdays. And what that is, is any games taped during the week, whether I do it or anybody else does it, whether it's baseball, softball, rugby, whatever. They all get aired in a big clump, back to back to back to back, starting 4 o'clock Saturday afternoons. 
It's a good deal Tom Lee Polk's got together, the program director at Channel 15. It's, it is. It's very good. I mean, he'll show the games, too, at other times during the week, during, you know, night hours, day hours. But it's a good thing. He just takes everything he gets handed in for the week and starts it off on a Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock. You can see all the local sports. And that is going to be foul. Now, I already mentioned Tony Sorelli back as head coach at Post 31, American Legion Post 31. And he does an outstanding job. He's got Jeff Brewer with him down there as his assistant coach. And George Bennett. And Ron Fairbanks, of course, is the general manager. And that's the administrative side of the baseball team. Got him. So Sharon will have his... Third strike out of the ball game. It'll be one nothing. Bellows Falls as we go to the bottom of the second. Chris Barker getting his first swings of the evening against Ryan Lolly. Warner Clark remains behind the plate. Justin Spaulding's at first base. Dave Lockerbie is at second. Andy LaCrosse is your shortstop. Quentin Young's at third base and the first pitch of the second inning by Bellows Falls. Lolly has fouled off for a strike. It's going to be Parker, Ryan, and Tao up coming up. Post 31 with a couple base runners in that first inning. One got picked off, and then they stranded the other one, and no, that bent around the corner, but it nick it, and it'll be a ball. 1-1 one, one the count. And again, it's a warm, humid night, but it's kind of night you play baseball on. Oh, that was a great pitch. And it looks like it's going to be played and caught out there in right field by Ty Goldman Peak. So there's a fly ball out by Parker. Chad Ryan coming up now. And of course he's getting his first looks at the pitcher Ryan Lolly right now. I invite you to watch Sports Beat on Channel 15. It's on show number 340. And it's not always about sports, so don't get don't get turned off if you're not a sports fan. It's God, you can turn it on. I could be cooking. There's woodworking. There's kayaking, hiking. I mean, there's all kind of music, theater, drama, a variety show. It's, it's a little bit of everything. You can see all, everything show. But it's on Mondays at 4.30, it's Tuesdays at 5.30, and Thursday nights at 9 o'clock. And that's going to be playable, I think. First baseman has it. He goes in the shadows, Spalding does. He'll make the catch. So two down very quickly here for Lolly and Bellows Falls. Ricky Tao up now. He is your left fielder for Rutland Post 31 in the red, white, and blue uniforms at the plate. Bellows Falls in the yellow uniforms, purple trim. He's got the lead one, nothing over Rutland. And that could be an extra base hit. That could be over the wall. It is an extra base hit. It's four extra bases. Oh, that just kept going and going. And we got a tie ball game on a first pitch hit home run by Ricky Tao. Oh, nice stroke. What a sweet swing by Rick. You can touch him up, and now he'll go through and do all the high five and elbow slapping, door slamming, turn the handle stuff, all that cool things that the athletes do nowadays. And got a 1 1 game. Now Brewer up, Garrett Brewer up. Tough act to follow that home run to left field. I'm just trying to do the math. That's about 330 feet, that home run. So one to one now in the bottom of the second. And that'll sail high. A good looking pitch, but it did sail up and out of the strike zone. It exploded and elevated. How's that for some fancy lingo, huh? And that'll be too low in the dirt, and that'll be ball two. So a good eye by Brewer. Of course, speaking of power, Brewer's a big, strong guy. He's got a lot of power, too, if he gets his hold of the ball. He could send it out on the St. Joseph's Avenue also. As the pitch will come in. Oh, he goes the opposite field with some authority. And yeah, he's going to keep running. He's going to have two bases. He's moving, moving, moving. Going to hold him up. I had to make sure because he was just turning on the juice coming around. So he goes opposite field double. So Lolly, this inning, started off with two very quick outs, but then he gave up the home run and a double, and now Johnny Holtman up. Yeah, so Holtman with a chance to give Rutland their first lead of the evening. As there are two down. I got to tell you, I like the hustle Brewer had moving around those bases out there. So the left-handed hitting Holtman 
against the left-handed pitching Lolly. Well, I like it. I like it. He went to bunt. They were so deep at the corner. Third, if he could have just got that away far enough from the pitcher, he probably would have been easily at first base. Top of the order, Rob Dorian on deck. If Holtman can keep this thing going here. It's 1-1 one, one in the bottom of the second. Post 37 from Bells Falls in the field defensively with the yellow uniforms and our very own Rutland Post 31 at the plate with the red, white, and blue uniforms on. Wind up in the pitch. See that nice breaking motion? I mean, that was a ball, obviously, but boy, he's got some good movement on that pitch. Hope you've enjoyed all the uh, sports I've been able to bring you through the years. It's community volunteer stuff. I just enjoy doing it. There's no, no pay, no sponsorship, nothing like that. And a lot of people don't understand why I do it, but it's to help the, uh, you know, first of all, to be blunt, the kids like to get on TV and they work hard and then the programs need recognition. And then a lot of the grandparents and aunts and uncles can't actually make the game, so they get to see it at a later date. And it's just a real positive experience. And I've really enjoyed my 12 years. It'll be 12 years November. I, November 1995, I started running the cameras for people and, while oh God, working with the Brian Mayhews. And, oh, we'll go way back, start naming names, back when... Channel 15 was behind Adelphia, well, where Comcast is now, and there's a walk to Holtman. Then they moved up Channel 15 to the Stafford Center, and now they got the new building at the House Center. And been quite a ride, been quite a ride doing this. Like I said, my late wife was a tremendously huge part of, of the, she'd run cameras in the studio, and she'd run, if I did two cameras out on, the, you know, during the, uh, a shoot out in the field. She would do the second camera and run graphics and just was supportive a bit. Loved to watch the kids play. Their enthusiasm and all that. Dr. Bove talked to me. Ernie Bove did during the week. He told me that one of her greatest qualities though is that she was just so unselfish in allowing me to come do this stuff. The second, that's going to be the inning, but we got a 1-1 game on the Ricky Tao home run. We'll go into the third. Everything knotted up. Now the number nine hitter for Bells Falls, Ty Golden Peacup, and he obviously rep represents the first time through the order. Looking at Matt Sharon, the pitcher for Rotten Post 31, and then on top of the order on deck, Justin Beebe. Bells Falls with a run in the first, and Rutland with a home run in the bottom of the second. Scheduled for seven, the weather won't be a problem. We'll make it seven innings. And the way these guys play, and they're so evenly matched up, we could play longer in seven innings, you know. And that's a strike one for Matt Sharon. Number 22 with his back to you. That one got away from him. Again, very, very warm and humid night. He could have a lot of perspiration on his hand right there, and it's going to be a one ball, one strike count. And that outfield got John Holtman in right, Chad Ryan in center, Ricky Tao was in left behind the plate, Ryan Carter with all that catcher gear on, man, in his hot heat. He's earning himself hopefully a big free Sunday or something to eat like ice cream after the game. Back to the pitcher, Sharon, he'll flip the first, Burt with the catch, and he'll retire the number nine hitter, Ty Goldman Peak. And doesn't mean he won't score, but it really is a big thing, I think, to get that leadoff batter out. Justin Beebe, who had an infield single and eventually scored on a wild pitch, is back up now. So he'll get set. He wants to do a little grounds work inside the batter's box. You see him kind of filling one of the holes from where the other hitters were digging a little ditch for him to stand in. He's set now on the pitch and the windup, and nice pitch. See, as the game's going along, Sharon's starting to develop a rhythm now. He's starting to get, get down the sequence of his pitches because... Like, you know, like any pitcher, Matt would tell you this here after this pitch. He's got beautiful mechanics. Watch his mechanics. Strike two. Pitcher will find out as the game progresses early on what pitch is working for him. Now, this game, it might be his breaking ball. Next game, it could be his fastball. So he's got to figure out what pitch is going to work for him tonight, or pitch is. Then he kind of develops the sequence he wants to set up his pitches with and gets his rhythm. And that's a pretty good example right there. Sit down, take a break. That's going to be the fourth strikeout. Second time looking this, at this evening for a strikeout. Two down, and Lockerbie up. 
He struck out looking back in the first. Matt Sharon looking for his. And this would be the seventh in a row he would retire if he can get Lockerbie. Lacrosse is on deck and Sharon is set. That's going to be out of play. Fall ball strike. Yeah. Yeah, you got to go all the way back to law to uh, the the walk to Warner Clark in the first, and then he retired six in a row. So he's working with a strike, and nobody on base right now. An 0 one count. That one again I had a good pop on it, but it was high. Outfield about the midway point. Ricky Tiles got that Sunfield to contend with. Out in left field for Rutland. Oh, nice pitch. Set it up at inside corner at the knee on the fastball. And he's got a one-two count. And he's got four strikeouts in the ball game already. Two of those strikeouts came on people watching him go by. And Sharon looking to retire seven in a row. We'll get set. And he's been pretty much whatever Ryan Carter's been putting down for the sign. He hasn't really had a lot of problem agreeing with him. He'll get the strikeout. Five strikeouts now in the game for Sharon. Seven retired in a row, and we're tied at one going in the bottom of the third. Ryan Lolly, number 20, is back to you. He'll start off his third inning of work. He's rented a home run to post 31's Ricky Tao. And Matt Sharon up. He had a walk. His first and only time up. He'll take a strike one. And for Bells Falls, I already mentioned Lolly the pitcher, but then you got to give that catcher a lot of credit tonight. Warner Clark behind the plate. And Sharon will go the opposite way. Bobbled, 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 and go, oh, man, going to make it. He'll be on via the air. And he kind of reached out and slapped that. He went with the pitch. It was on the outside corner. And, of course, he can leg it down there pretty quick and put some pressure on the defense after they bobbled the ball. Jeff McLaughlin up now. He grounded out 5-3. Grounded out the third baseman his first time up. Of course, that was Quentin Young. Well, we'll see how aggressive. Coach really wants to be with the base running now. He's got to run it first. Nobody down. McLaughlin, good contact hitter. Wow, that's real close to being a balk, and that's going to be no way they're going to throw McLaughlin out. No way they'll throw McLaughlin out. He will have an infield single unofficially in my book. They'll put runners at first and second. Well, perfect time now for Ryan Carter to just unload on one as he'll come up with two down. He grounded out to the shortstop his only time up. And of course, that was Andy Lacrosse. So Ryan Carter got the table set to give Post 31 the lead. It's one to one in the bottom of the third. Those falls striking first had that one nothing lead after a half inning and then Rotten able to tie it up and Carter showing bunt. And he didn't pull off it either. And that pitch in the dirt. Nice job behind the plate by Clark blocking the ball and not letting they squirt by him, letting those runners move up. He's got a little chat with his pitcher. Now, it is a very humid, warm night, but I, I just can't believe these young guys who just finished high school baseball season wouldn't be conditioned by now to go five, six, seven innings on the mound because of the weather. I, mean, I don't think that should really be a problem. Oh, they're going. It's a double steal. There's a swing and a miss, and... He's going to be safe. And the ball will get by him, and he's going to come in with the game. Go ahead, run. Yes. So Sharon will get home. That was a great call on the double steal. The ball was just a wild throw to third by Warner Clark. He ended up out in left field, and runners will move up. Sharon will actually score. And McLaughlin ends up at third base. Still nobody down. Carter's still at the plate, and he's got a 1-1 count. Now, you might say, why did Ryan swing at that around his eyeballs? Well, he was it was a double steal. I mean, that was a set play. He was trying to, A, protect the runners or, you know, make contact. That's going to be down to third. Bobbled, and he's going to not. Yeah. They're going to give him second base shot. I was waiting. The run will come in, and the ball went out of play. That's what I was waiting to see. And so he not only will get first base, but they'll award him second base because the ball went out of play. So post 31 taking advantage of some Bellows Falls miscues here. So McLaughlin will score, making it 3-1. to one. Carter will go over to second base. 
And Chris Prager up, he flied out to right field his first time up, which was Ty Golden Peak. And that's going to be deep in the hole. Great backhand by Lacrosse, and got him. I'll tell you what, where's Lacrosse? Oh, there he is. That was awesome. Deep in a hole on a backhand, set himself through a strike, gets you out. Chad Ryan now, he popped up in foul territory to the first baseman. There is one out, three to one, Rutland taking the lead here in the bottom of the third. And Chad Ryan has Ryan Carter down at second base. Well, that'll definitely get more to third. And They'll throw to first, get the out. Two down, but Carter moves up to third base on a nice piece of hitting there by Chad Ryan. Now Ricky Tau up. Last time he's up, and actually the only time he's been up, the ball left the yard. He took it deep and out and over the left field wall towards St. Joseph Avenue, and he tied the game at one, and now in post 31 able to break through for a couple here in this third inning to take a three to one lead. And that pitch will be high for a ball. Yeah, I'm trying to see if they're going to try to stay outside on him, not bring the pitch inside where he could just crush the ball like he did last time he was up. That ball was right over the heart of the plate that he hit for the home run. Now there's another pitch outside. So the catcher and the pitcher learn very fast. But it is a 2-0 count, and on deck will be Garrett Brewer. Popped up. Looks to be playable. Everybody's calling for it, and it's going to not be caught. And then they almost turn and threw the ball away, going to first base. Oh, yeah, so a two down. Again, this has been a bad inning. As Carter came in to score, and I forgot to mention that, because it's two down. He's going on everything. But, again, the breeze was no factor. I mean, maybe the sunshine bothered him there. That was... Dave Lockerbie that was having trouble seeing the ball or handling the ball, but three runs so far this inning for a total of four for the game, and that's going to be followed back onto River Street. So Ricky Town over there at first base, Garrett Brewer at the plate. He had a double to the opposite field his last time up. Actually, it was his only time up until now, so. Yeah, see, that was too high. That, that got the plate and everything, but it, it came across just about letter high. So post 31, having a slow start, but starting to get it all together here, both pitching and defense and at the plate. And they're taking advantage of the mistakes, really. I mean, how many games have you watched a team make mistakes, the other team not be able to take advantage of it? And post 31 not having that problem right now. And that'll be another ball. Good eye right there by Brewer laying off that pitch. Well, 3-1 count. Let's see if they give him the green light if it's a ball that's in his power zone. Oh, they did, and he got a base hit. I like the fact that, oh, and they'll skip past the outfielder, and they're going to wave towel home. No, put the brakes on the third. Oh, Bells falls with just so many mistakes this inning. I'm not criticizing it. I'm sure they would agree with you. But that ball misplayed out there by the left fielder. But uh, the other thing on that play was, though, with a 3-1 count, they let him swing away, and he got a base hit, and then the error, and that's good stuff. Good stuff happened when you're aggressive. That's a strike to Holtman. Holtman represents the number nine spot. He had a walk his first time up. Top of the order, Rob Dorian on deck. 4-1, to one, post 31 over post 37 of Bells Falls. And that'll be fall ball. Tell you, Robbie, I mean, uh, John liked that pitch, too. It was, it was just belt high and just a smidgen off the plate towards him, and that's where he likes to hit. And again, that breeze really not a factor. I'm up where you can really feel it. It's very gentle breeze. And that's a good job behind the plate by Warner Clark as he knocked down that short curveball that bounced in the dirt and kept everybody where they were. That's up the middle. That's going to be knocked down. Nope, he's going to be safe. 
That was it's going to be almost an impossible play, but a good effort out there by Lockerbie. He just couldn't flip it. And the run does come in. Don't forget, Tau was down at third base. He scores the fourth run of the inning. And this is the ninth batter to come to the plate. Dorian up now. He's had an infield single, and then he hit in, he was forced out on a ground ball at second base. Well, he turned on that pitch real quick. Quick hands, real quick hands through the strike zone. So that'll be strike one on a fall ball. Two runners on base, four runs in, five to one, post 31 with the lead. Good pitch. That backdoor breaking ball. He got him with it. He got him with it. So an 0-2 count and fall ball. Good job staying alive. Boy, I tell you what, the people in the bleachers had to do some pretty quick dance in order there not to get popped with the ball. So still, no balls, two strikes. Puts it in play, and oh, got him. I'm waiting to see. Yeah, he called him out, but a big inning, 5-1, to one, the lead for post-31. And yeah, it's the third out. And yeah, they're, they were just holding out. They thought he might have been safe, but he was clearly called out. And that's the inning, 5-1, post-31 with the lead. Unofficially, through three innings of work, Matt Sharon has struck out five, walked one, and given up one hit. He's got the lead now at 5-1, and Andy Lacrosse will be the batter for Bellows Falls. And I got him. Just nicked him with that big old lazy curveball. So lacrosse will be the first player from either side to be hit by a pitch. Warner Clark up. He was the walk that was issued by Sharon back in the first. Now, so there's nobody out. One on. We're in the fourth. Five to one Rutland post 31 in his league matchup with Bellows Falls on Channel 15 on Munger Vision on your television. And Clark taking a long time to get all settled into the batter's box, making Sharon wait. Don't forget, Sharon's got a good move to first. This could be double play juice. There's nobody's going to be out. Yeah. And he'll be backed up by Ryan. Yeah. Now, I think they're seeing if he caught the ball or if he hit the dirt. I'm guessing. Yeah, they're getting together. I thought he caught the initial ball, but right now the, the uh, Bells Falls player is standing at first and second base. And it'll be interesting. Of course, I got a tough angle. I'm, I'm out in center field. And I really couldn't tell you if it skimmed off the dirt and he caught it or if he caught it before it hit the ground. Okay, so what they, they talked it over, and you can see the indication was everybody's safe. And we're, they're just going to carry the discussion a little further. Coach Shrelly not quite sold on the fact that that wasn't caught for the out. And that'll bring up Ryan Lawley now. Now they thought, they think that Sharon caught the ball hit up the middle and then he threw and tried to get the runner out at second base. But you know, in all honesty, if he did catch the ball, he didn't have to throw a second base to get the runner. It was a line drive. He just had to throw the first base, and then we just stepped on the bag and run him out. So I'm kind of leaning toward that he knew he didn't catch the ball, and so he's trying to throw to the second baseman, trying to get the runner advancing and either start a double play or at least force out the lead runner. You follow me? If he did catch that and he didn't hit the ground to get the double play, the runner was already basically almost a second. He just had to throw to first, and the first baseman would just tag the bag, and that would have been a double play. But, you know, I'm just filling up air time. Again, a lot of post-31 baseball action coming up for you at the uh, later dates on Munger Vision. Just check out. Uh, and post-31's got a website. The American Legion has a website. You can see where the games are. And, of course, the games are in the Rutland Herald listings. And, of course, I'm sure the guys on the radio tell you what day the games are on. I mean, there's just a lot of ways to figure out when to come down and watch the games. And I really want you to come down and watch the games in person. But I really want you to go home and just continue to watch my Channel 15, too. I mean... Why not have the best of both worlds? Now, 
Okay, so we got a first and second situation. Nobody down and Ryan Lolly up. And Lolly grounded out to the pitcher Sharon. And this is his second look now at Matt's Sharon, the pitcher. We'll see what adjustments either player made to each other here. The hitter to the pitcher and the pitcher to the hitter. And we'll yeah, Brewer won't hold the runner on at first. It's, that's a good move. I mean, it's really ridiculous to be a runner at first and second. And it'll be low. And now Carter's going to come out and have a little discussion. Now, it could be a matter, too, of just getting the sign straight with runner at second. They might have a switch off. Or Ryan might have called for a certain pitch and location and didn't get it and just wants to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Or we'll have another meeting. This looks like... Uh, this is more meetings than at the Alderman meetings on Channel 21. Sub meetings. Okay, so everybody seems to be all set here. From the stretch, Matt Sharon in the fourth inning of work. Oh, he's going to go to second. He'll make the good throw. There's one. Dorian to first. Yeah, and I'll tell you what. See how Sharon really made sure, A, he got the ball, and B, made a good throw to second base. So they'll get one out out of that play. Lacrosse moves up to third base. And then Lolly will be out there. And Hudson up now. He struck out his only time up. Five strikeouts for Sharon. And he'd love to get one right here and make it two down. Or get a fly ball on the infield or a ground ball where the runner can't go home. But We'll see how, you know, Bells Falls, this is a great situation to send a runner for first to second on a steal, too. He's got first and third situation, one down. You're down by four runs, a lot of time left, a seven-inning game, scheduled for seven. You're in the fourth, top of the fourth. That's going to be a fister back into the screen and fall for a strike. Oh, that's a jammer. Sometimes that stings your hands pretty good as a hitter. And again, just a, a, a baseball night. Yeah, it's warm and muggy, but that, this is baseball. It's summer, man. Good place to come get a tan. Come watch a Legion baseball game. And the pitch from Sharon, and that's going to be too high, and that'll be a ball. So that'll leave him count up at one ball, one strike. He can post 37 from Bellows Falls. Got that first inning run, held the lead after one, and then a home run by Ricky Tal for Rutland Post 31, and that tied things up. And then a combination of mistakes by Bellows Falls and just being opportunistic by Post 31, and they had a four run last inning. Boy, that's some good base. That's, that's real aggressive base running by Bellows Falls. I love to watch that. So they'll move the runners up to second and third with one out. So Hansen looking to get Bell's Falls right back in the ball game here. There are good arms in the outfield though too. I mean, if the ball is driven to the outfield, nice job on that pitch by Sharon. I mean, Holtman, Ryan, and Tao. All with very strong arms in the outfield for post-31. American Legion Baseball, Channel 15 among her vision. That's a pretty good mix right there. I like that he's going back to where he feels comfortable with, which is the full windup. Oh, great pitch. Six strike out of the ball game. Third one looking, and he comes at a great time. Come, comes the second out of the inning. Now Justin Spalding up. He grounded out to the third baseman, Jeff McLaughlin. Of course, that happened back in the second inning. Well, it'd be a if, if, and that's a huge if, if Bellows Falls doesn't get a run here, that's going to be a good opportunity squandered by Bellows Falls. Sharon came inside, and just a little bit too much inside, actually, and that'll be a ball. Yeah, and it's set the defense for you. I should tell you right now, Brewer is at first base. Second base is Parker. Dorian's at short. McLaughlin at third. That's Big Ryan Carter behind the plate. Sharon's on the mound. Tau, Ryan, and Holtman. That is the outfield for post 31. They're in their red, white, and blue uniforms, and that's going to be off his foot fall. And yeah, he's not going to rub it. He's going to be tough. That'll be a fall ball strike. 1 1 the count, 5 1 the score. Rutland with the lead. St. Peter's Field, place to be all summer long for some good baseball action. Also, the Red Thunder, Eastern New York travel team. 
How are you caught some of the games on Channel 15? They're a good group to watch. They play between here and Northwood Park. But if you get a chance, take some of their games in. Oh, my goodness, that's just... You could see it just froze the hitter. That was a great... Uh, he's mixed it up well tonight, his pitches. Sharon's, Sharon's mixed it up really well out there. Got six strikeouts. Two outs in this inning, and a chance to end the inning right here with that one-two count. And he will. He'll go to the full windup, and he's going to be put into play on a little dinker, and it's going to be picked up by Brewer. He'll flip to Sharon, find the bag. There's the out. They'll strand two, and they'll stay 5-1, to one, post 31 in the lead, going into the bottom of the fourth. Well, Matt Sharon looking to get things started here for post 31. He has walked in the first and reached on an error in the third. He'll be followed in the order by Jeff McLaughlin and Ryan Carter and Chris Parker. So we'll see how Post 31 can keep that scoring per inning around. There's a line drive out. Lockerbie with the catch, and there's one down. Now Post 31 has scored one run in the second, three in the third, and they're looking to keep that trend going here in the fourth. Now McLaughlin up, he grounded out to the third baseman, had an infield single, and eventually scored in the third inning. Great pitch. Lolly, of course, had a big lanky left-hander. That's a great location to a right-handed hitter right there. And again, he has worked, even in his rough inning when he had the four runs scored against him, he's caught the ball and fired. He has not been deliberate between pitches. He's not had a lot of downtime. He's just catching and firing. And I, I personally think that's a good way to work yourself into a good rhythm. Ball hit back to Lolly. He'll turn, square up, fire, two down. Now, he's been in this territory before where he's got the first two outs and then got in a little bit of trouble. Ryan Carter up. He reached on an error his last time up and scored. Prior to that, he grounded out to shortstop Andy Lacrosse. So, Bells Falls and Rutland. And, like again, a lot of good teams coming up. We've got Essex, South Burlington, KSC coming up. Uh, some good northern competition. And of course, you're going to see your Bennington's and your Brattleboro's and all those rivalry games. So, I mean, again, watch it live and then watch it on Channel 15, and that'll be a ball. That's that backdoor breaking ball, and that was too far backdoor, and that makes a two ball and no strike count. And that was a good pitch. That's a pitcher's pitch right there. That'll make it a 2 1 count. Ryan Carter at the catcher's spot this evening. And, of course, Ryan can basically play any way you put him. That's a foul tip caught for a strike, too. He can pitch, shortstop, third base. I mean, it really isn't a position. I've seen him in the outfield everywhere. He's just a natural baseball player and just a good athlete. And that is popped up. I'm waiting to see who's going to make the catch. Oh, Locker B. Oh, that's the second time he's muffed the ball out there. And he's in the shade. I just can't believe that's the sun bothering him. But... He's having a tither of a time out there with the fly balls. So that'll be the second time tonight. Parker now. He's grounded out and flied out. and He's looking to get a two-out rally continued here as they have Carter at first base. And there's a strike called. Of course, Chris Parker, unfortunately, in his final year of Legion Baseball, which has been a great, great guy to have on your team. And that's a good pitch. That's strike two. And so Parker, uh, real quick here, down in the count, 0-2. And, and the pitch from Lolly, he'll have them. Oh, just a nasty sequence of pitches. And there's the tag out. Okay, we'll go to fade now. 5-1 Rutland with the lead going into the fifth. Got a new batter out there, Zach Whitman. Making an appearance, and he's batting in place of Quentin Young. It's Matt Sharon, 22 with his back team, the dark blue uniforms with the red sleeves. Well, starting off with the ball, trying to tease him with that curveball to the inside. Now, Matt's been starting off a lot of the hitters with that first pitch breaking ball. Like I said, he's been able to ring up seven strikeouts unofficially. But he's got a one ball, no strike count, and that'll be strike one now. It's 
I almost had slider action, but I don't think it was a slider. It just had that cut action down and in. Via 1 1 count, it's Zach Whitman, and then the number 9 hitter, Ty Goldman Peak, do up for Bellows Falls. They had the 1 0 lead, they couldn't hold it, and a Ricky Tao home run tied up the game at 1 1. And then Rutland with four runs in the third inning, and they've got that 5 1 lead. That's where we're at in the fifth 5 1 Rutland. Post 31 American Legion Baseball action on Peg TV Channel 15 Sports. Brought to you by Munger Vision. And that's opposite field. Holtman, 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 Holtman. Played it on the bounce. Smart play. Yeah, he didn't want to gamble and let that ball get by him. That could have turned into a triple easy. So good play in the outfield. Nice piece of hitting also. We got a runner at first base. That'll bring the leadoff hitter on. Remember, they got the leadoff hitter on in the last inning when he got hit by a pitch. No, I changed that. There's only six strikeouts in the game. I'm sorry. So Ty Golden peak up. That's got to be a strike. Beautiful pitch. Yeah, he grounded out to the pitcher, Sharon, and that was back in the third inning. This is his second chance to see what Matt's got tonight. And against 5-1 to one in the fifth, post 31. And the lead, we're scheduled for seven tonight. There's the throw to first, and yeah, the ball didn't get far away from Brewer for any damage to be done. That's Whitman over at first base. He had an opposite sealed field single to start off his fifth inning. So, Sharon. Like I said, post 31 with back-to-back -back double headers this weekend. Oh, nice pitch. Just just throw them, just owned them. That's nasty stuff, man. 0-2 oh, with the count. All summer it goes, you know, and hopefully they'll qualify for the tournament post-31. Well, I gotta find my paperwork, but I'm sure this could be Southern tournaments here this year. Yeah, Matt Sheeran didn't like something. He stepped off the rubber and kind of stepped to the side there and recomposed himself, and he's set to go now. Again, he's got a, for a right-handed pitcher, he's got a nice move to first base. Those lefties like Ryan Lolly for Bell's Falls, they got a big advantage being a left-handed pitcher. They get to look right at the base runner at first. Long look in, gets the sign, and beautiful pitch. Got his seventh strikeout now. I'll check my math. It's never been that good. Should be top of the order, Justin Beebe. Yeah, Justin Beebe struck out looking his last time up. Did score a run on an infield single, eventually came around to score in the first, and that's the only run for Bells Falls. So one out, one on. Bells Falls has been, when they have had the base runners, which isn't a lot tonight, they've been aggressive. And you see he started them off for his pitch breaking ball again because he found the pitch that's working for him tonight, and that's the one he's going to kind of lean on more tonight. Like I said, every pitcher is different. Every pitcher will tell you their main pitch changes every game. You don't know what you're going to have command of or what's going to work for you. Right now, though, it's that. He's using that breaking ball to say, you know, something fouled off for a strike, strike two. So very quickly, an 0-2 count. Matt Sharon, a Mill River Union High School graduate. Got a year of college ball under his belt now, and he's back here in the old red, white, and blue at post 31. Now, I'm not sure that was really a pitch out. I just came up to the point where it was a good catching and throwing position for Carter, the catcher, and he just kind of pump faked, got the runner kind of thinking to go back to first. That's Whitman over at first base. Remember, he pinch hit for the number eight hitter. Oh, he got him on the strikeout. Yeah, he doesn't have to tag him because there's a runner at first base, so. So Sharon now, again, he's got that breaking ball working something nasty. Unofficially, I got him as eight strikeouts, and now Dave Lockerbie do up. They're gonna have Blanchard hit in this spot. So Blanchard will hit for Lockerbie. Eight strikeouts for Matt Sharon, and again, started off just a little shaky in the first inning, but then he just got everything working. Now he's pitching a strong ball game. Got a left-handed hitter up. They're holding the runner at first base, so that left-handed hitter being bowled the ball 
Got a little bit of a bigger gap to hit through first and second base where they're in that, in that hole over there. Oh, what a nice adjustment. He bought that slow breaking ball just more towards the, like it was a right-handed hitter because he's got a lefty up now. So he does want to drop it into his power zone like he would be pitching to a right-handed hitter. So he just moved the pitch out on him. But again, it was a breaking ball as the first pitch. That's a great effort over there. Well, that's a quiz to pace, I think. Zach's gone in to play first base, and that could score a run. And no, oh, they will have runners at first and third. And that is Zach at quiz to pace. He's stuck in the game on me defensively. So quiz to pace has gone to first base defensively. So Blanchard turned on that and ripped the ball. First and third, two down. Now we've seen post 31 have two outs and generate some runs, and that's what Bells Falls is trying to do now, generate some runs with two outs. Five to one, Rutland with the lead in the fifth, top of the fifth, to be precise. The pitch and a strike. Great location. Fast ball inside, got a little GM job, got the call at the knee, and it'll be an all one count. Sharon trying to work out of a two-out pickle here. He's got runners at the corners and Bells Falls right now. Great time to run. Oh, he got that. He f totally fooled the batter, Lacrosse, who turned on the pitch and then it hit the corner for a strike. I don't know. I'm thinking. I'm thinking if you send a runner from first to second and you throw him out, the worst case scenario is you have Lacrosse leading off the next inning. That's not a bad deal. He got him strike three. Sharon with nine strikeouts now maintains a 5-1 lead going in the bottom of the fifth. Okay, got to bear with me, all right? I don't have number one on my roster, but I believe I heard the PA announcer say Kyle Mack. So the new pitcher for Bells Falls is Kyle Mack, and we'll go with that because they don't get our station anyway, so they wouldn't know if I screwed up. And what we have at the plate, see him jump inside. It looks like Chad. Yeah, it's Chad Ryan up there. So Chad Ryan, Ricky Tao, and Garrett Brewer do up. So Tao will... Take a, well, I'm sorry, I'm one batter at it. It's Chad Ryan still taking a strike. Ricky Tao on deck. And Kyle Mack, wasting no time catching and firing like the pitcher he relieved, Ryan Lolly, did that also. Lolly didn't pitch bad. He did give up the home run to Tao, but there are a lot of mistakes made behind him tonight that led to runs. That's the third base, long throw, and got him. Good job of the catch and the tag, and they got him. So Chad Ryan will be out on that. 5-3 ground out, and that was a nice job by the first baseman over there. Justin Spaulding going up to get that high throw. Ricky Thow up. He's had a home run tonight, reached on an error, and scored. So he scored twice tonight. His home run, quite a beautiful shot. And a good pitch right there by Mack at the knee for a ball. Or strike, excuse me. <laughs> I can't believe how well I've done tonight, to tell you the truth, under the conditions. That'll be fouled out of play. And that will make it a, obviously a strike on that foul ball. 5-1 score, inbound the fifth, post 31 the lead, and at the plate. That's going to be tough. And it went foul. Thank goodness, because Bells Falls would have never, ever been able to make a play on that one. They'd eat that one. So they'll send Thal back to the plate and get them all set again here. Garrett Brewer spot up next. That should be a Quistipace batting in his place. So Remember, Zach went in and replaced Brewer defensively last inning. So Kyle Mack on in relief. Oh, that's going to be a oh, foul. Tell you what, that's catching a break right there by the third baseman on that side. I believe that's Whitman that's coming to play third to replace Young. I just can't see his jersey number right now with his back to me. And that is Whitman that's gone into play third. So we'll just send the runners and the hitters and everybody get back into position here. 
as the fielders are all set. And Ricky Thau all set. And Mack with a big wind up got him. Oh, what a nasty pitch. So that'll be his first strikeout since coming on in the fifth inning, which this is the fifth inning. Two down. So Quistapace up for the first time tonight, and he's got all kinds of power in that big body of his. He can hit the bleachers out here if he catches one on his sweet spot of the bat. And he's gonna have a, yeah, he's gonna have a base hit. He just blew that right through the hole at short, and he didn't even wait. One pitch, boom, got a base hit. So with two outs, post 31 will have a runner on first base. Johnny Holtman up now. He's walked and singled, so he's been on base twice tonight for post 31. He's, of course, he's their lefty. He'll step in here from the left side. And that will fade too far inside. That's an awkward pitch to throw to a left-handed hitter. I mean, he goes in for a ball, but I mean, you're bringing that right around on the arc into his hitting zone that way. And not too far outside. Nibbled on the corner, but didn't get the call. And there'll be two balls now to Holtman. Quista Pace getting a very conservative lead down there at first base right now. That's going to be sliced foul toward the bleachers and out of play. So we'll have a 2-1 count now on John Holtman. He represents the number nine spot in the order, and that means top of the order, Rob Dorian's on deck. Four runs in the third. That broke open a 1-1 game. Post 31 with the lead now at 5-1. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Scheduled for seven. And that's going to be followed out of play off the rooftop of the dugout of post 31. And you can see by the picture that the shadow is now starting to creep across beautiful St. Peter's Field. They'll set up inside and... He got inside, there's the scoop, the pick, the fire, and he threw it away. Yeah, and they're gonna keep him running. You see Holtman, he's gonna reach on an air for the second time tonight. Quist pace will go to third base, and just your most routine plays, you can't be nonchalant on him, as you can see right there with what would happen. So again, just mistakes by Post 31, or post 37 of Bells Falls. That's two down, and they had the third out right there, all secured, and they just threw the ball around. And that's led to a couple of runs tonight, that type of haphazard play. So, second and third, two down, and Rob Dorian up. Well, he's got a chance to make this a comfortable lead late in the innings, the base hit here. And that'll be too far outside for a ball. Bells Falls, last year's state champions, went on to play in the. Uh, the big New England tournament, and well, I tell you, they won the Southern. Actually, they won the whole thing in dramatic fashion, and it looks to be playable, playable, playable. Got it. That will strand two, leave it five to one. We're going into the six, post 31, with the lead. So Matt Sharon will answer the bell here in the sixth inning. He's going to be working with nine strikeouts in the ball game. He's done a great job tonight. He's looking to catch your Warner Clark. And that's going to be picked up by McLaughlin. There's Jeff, and the throw. Got him. I'll see Quisted Pace with those big old long arms of his. Able to come off the bag, make the catch, and make the tag. Nice play by Zach Quisted Pace. So there's one out. They get that leadoff batter. Now, Mack up now. He's hitting in Lolly's spot. Remember, he took over for Lolly. So Kyle Mack with his first chance to swing the bat this evening. What I like about Legion Ball in, in, in a lot of the baseball's games that I cover in high school season, the pitchers never go the full seven innings anymore for a lot of reasons, not right or wrong reasons. They just Legion Ball pitchers tend to get the opportunity. If they've got the ability and the arm strength and the conditioning and, and they're pitching well, they get to go the whole seven. And Matt Heron, obviously, in my opinion, one of those guys can give you all seven innings. He's in the six with one down and nobody on. And he's working with a 1-1 one, one count. And boy, you talk about going up the ladder and getting one. He chased that one. I'm going to be into the screen. And foul ball strike, one and two, and nine strikeouts so far in the ball game as Kyle Mack at the plate with C.J. Hodson on deck. 
Actually, the last inning, all three outs recorded were on strikeouts. They did, he did give up the single that, that broke up the one, two, three, struck out the side type big speech thing, but that's going to be Dorian deep in the hole, sets himself, fires, and Tyquist Pace is just a magnificent defensive first baseman. Yeah, and he's, he's a big target like Brewer is over there, and they both can fish the ball out of the dirt. And I'll tell you what, those big first basemen, they're their fielders like their shortstop and third basemen. They're their best friends, let me tell you that. So Hodson up now with two down and nobody on. And Matt Sharon, one of the big leaders on his post-31 team, has a defense behind him of... Zach Aquistapay's at first base, Chris Parker's at second, Rob Dorian's at short, Jeff McLaughlin's at third, the big stud behind the plates, Ryan Carter. And I'll let Sharon, Matt Sharon get the pitch here. Mm, we'll get the call on that one. Too far outside. Holtman, Ryan, and Tao are the outfield. And Ricky Tao has the home run tonight for post 31 that tied the game at one. And you can see the shadows now all through the most the infield, all oh, great pitch. Again, that's that's been his bread and butter pitch right there to the right-handed hitters tonight, and he's just been comfortable with it. It's been working for them, and he's just been using it very well. So a two-strike count. He's going to have his tenth strikeout to end the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth with post thirty-one up five to one. I think it's the third time this evening that Matt Sharon's let off an inning, so why not one more time? It's Kyle Mack is the pitcher for Bellows Falls. He came on to replace the fifth inning, Ryan Lawley. After in the bottom of the sixth, so far the difference in the ball game has been the four-run third that broke up a 1-1 tie and post 31 with that lead. And Sharon, McLaughlin, Carter do up here. He liked that first pitch, and that's why he's got a single. Yeah, they almost had that 9-3 put out like you see a lot in softball. But Sharon didn't take it for granted. He was moving it down the line. So that leadoff hitter is on. And it looks like they're going to go courtesy runner. Yeah, they want to save a little juice in those legs for Sharon for the seventh inning. So Gary Pelkey coming on to be the pinch runner, courtesy runner. And they're going to have McLaughlin take a break. Sorelli, Mike Sorelli, will come on, and he'll hit now for the first time. He'll hit for McLaughlin. Of course, Sorelli's dad, Mike's dad, is Tony. He's the head coach at Post 31. And, you know, I always say it. I mean, Mike, Mike's just like a coach's son. He's just got great instincts, great physical skills, thinks the game out, and a lot of fun to watch him play. Does a good job, whether he's pitching in the field or with the bat in his hand. And, and it's a two ball, no strike count. We're in the bottom of six. It's supposed to go seven. And that's fouled straight back off the backstop. They had to wait to retrieve the ball. It was in, it was in play, so they had to get it out of uh, the way. And that's going to be popped up for a strike. Runner was going on to play, too. And they'll send Pelkey back to first base, number 18, Gary Pelkey. One out, nobody on, one on, nobody out. There we go, just got it backwards. Again, I urge you to get out and support American Legion Post 31 baseball action, or any Legion ball team. You know, the Fairhaven squad's got a good team this year over there. You know, there, that's only like a 15, 16 minute ride. That's that's a good, good thing to go watch some of that. Great pitch. Kyle Mack would probably be his best pitch there. Gets his Second strikeout since coming on. Gets the first out of the inning. He's got two strikeouts and then since the fifth. Now Garrett Brewer up. And that should be Brian Carter. That's got to be, unless my book screwed up, which is possible. It's always possible because I'm always unofficial. Because you got to remember, too, I, I run the camera, yak the game up, and do the book all at once. And that's just way too much for me and my limited thinking ability to do. 
accurately. Runner goes, there's a throw down to second, and great slide. Pelkey with a nice slide is going to be safe. So I'll put him in scoring position with just one down, and again, that's just a burst of speed. Pitch on a wave, and there is that one out, and He turned away from the pitch. And you can see the strike call there. So we have a 2-2 two -two count now as we're in the six and that breeze has just died down even more. It was really never a factor. It just is even less now. That's going to be back to Mac. He's going to go to first base and get the out. He'll Good smart decision there. He kind of looked at third base at first, but no, no. Should get the definite out, and that's what he did. He took the out at first base. That was Bloomer at the plate. So he was hitting for the catcher card. Right now Chris Parker up. So Parker tonight is 0 for 3. Very rare night for Chris not to get on base. He can fix that right here. Nice job of ducking out of the way to that. He's got two down and a runner at third base. Matt Sharon had a single to start off this inning. He was had a courtesy runner come on, Gary Pelkey in his place, and strike call. You see him turn away from that pitch, Parker, but he did catch the inside corner, and it was called a strike. So we'll have a 1-1 one, one count. Yeah, and that's called taking one for the team. There's, I mean, he made an effort, but that ball was just never going to hurt him. But it was so far inside that they just couldn't argue that. Chad Ryan up. He's also 0 for 3 tonight. And, boy, I tell you, it's just not a bad situation first and third to send Parker. Just see if he can jumpstart something here, make something happen offensively. Even though that 5-1 to one lead, that's going to be the th third. The fire by Whitman. Get, did he have it? Yeah, they're going to call him out. And so we'll come up. What could be the final three outs here for Bellows Falls? They're down 5-1 to one going into the top of the seventh. So a chance to see a complete game here pitched by Matt Sharon. He's got 10 strikeouts. That's Bashaw at the plate. That's going to be a tough play. That's going to be a real tough play. Oh, they got him. One down. Oh, a real nice job by everybody involved there. So Bashad's gone to start off the seventh. And now it should be Zach Whitman up. And it is going to be Whitman up. He had that single, got stranded at third base back in the fifth. One thing Sharon, I mean, with the 10 strikeouts, obviously he's been very good around the plate and had control of his stuff. But he hasn't allowed what few hits he's given up. He hasn't allowed them to string together hits. There's really never been a potentially big inning the only run he gave up happened back in the first inning. And he'll kick himself in the butt. It was a couple of his wild pitches that actually allowed the run to score. After that, he just controlled the ball game. Even though we're not over yet. That'll be outside. I make it two balls, no strikes. We're in the top of the seventh, and we're scheduled for seven. We, so we might have come awful close to the end of tonight's journey here. Matt Sharon from the full windup. We'll put it down to Dorian. He will bobble, take his time, set himself up. Safe. You know, Dorian did everything right. He, he just stayed with it. He didn't panic and then of course the pace that big stretch, but that's going to be to no avail. He'll be safe at first base. I should bring up Ty Golden Peak unless they have a pinch hitter. Yep, and Travis Savior. He's in there. So Travis Savior up with one out, one on, and Bells Falls needing at least four to tie it. That's going to be a ball. A little low, a little inside. You take your pick, but it's a ball. And Sharon, he, like I said, he's gone, he's into the seventh inning of work, but he really hasn't thrown in a lot of pitches tonight. There's really been no inning except the fourth, maybe, where he had to extend himself a little bit. So he, he should have a lot of juice left in that young body. 
Cutting has fouled off for a strike. We're at 1-1 one, one in the count. Runner at first, one out. And the runner is being held on at first base by Quistapace. And as we've seen throughout the evening when there has been base runners, Sharon's been very, very good with a move to first. Great stop behind the plate by Carter. Yeah, somebody just said nice job, Carter, and they're absolutely right. And you know the shades coming across the infield, that left field for Ricky Tao out there remains to be a brutal sunfield to play in. So everybody all set. Matt Sharon had to tie up the cleats, get set, and we are good to go on the next pitch. We have a 2-1 count and no, tie the shoes too tight. Came in high for a ball. Three balls, one strike. I have no doubt. Yeah, they're going to talk to him, but I, I don't feel that he's in danger of being pulled out of the ball game. I think Coach Brewer coming out is just going to have a chat about some mechanics and the situation there in the ball game with that four-run lead. Is don't hurt yourself with the walks and stuff like that. You know, just would love to get Matt Sharon through the seventh inning, get a complete game because, like I said, they have back-to-back -back double headers. They have a double header on Saturday and a double header on Sunday. And Essex, of course, is Sunday's game, and that's always a wicked great team. And that KFC club coming in isn't uh, any cream puff either, so. Okay, so we broke up that meeting. We're good to go, and we'll see if Matt Sharon's came up with any good advice here to use. Yes, he did. He threw a nice pitch for a strike, got fouled off, and that'll make it a full count. Three balls, two strikes. To Xavier. Xavier. Then top your other BB do up. There is that one out, though. Five to one, post 31. With the lead, oh, and he came back, guys, 11 strikeout. He elevated, got the heater up in the air, some high cheese. Two outs, and BB had that infield, had that infield single and scored Bell's Falls only run back in the first inning. Then he struck out looking in the third and struck out swinging in the fifth. So Matt Sharon will go to first base. Whitman will be back ahead of that little slap tag over there by Quist Pace. And see if Sharon just, he's got the third out in the game in hand at the plate. See if he just kind of doesn't ignore the runner. Oh, great stop. And I tell you, if they would have got that play, I, I'm going to give him a, uh, just an A-plus for the effort by Dorian. First of all, he was so deep in the hole and it took a wicked hop on him. He was able to snag it down and still almost make the play. And Ben Blanchard up. Yeah, and Blanchard got runners at first and second. Oh, great pitch. Strike one. Two outs in this inning. 11 strikeouts in the game for Matt Sharon. He's been the starting pitcher. He's still in there and still plugging away. Yeah, and they're looking to get that finish here from him. Yeah, it came in too high. Right idea. I just couldn't bring it down quick enough, and that'll be a ball, so we'll have a 1-1 one, one count. He'll come to the full windup, and he'll get the call this time. He made the adjustment. He brought the pitch down, started a little bit more inside, and got it to loop around. So he's got a chance for his 12th strikeout, which would end the ball game. That'd be a pretty nice exclamation point for him on an excellent effort against a very good ball club. Nope, almost going to chase the high cheese, but he held up on it. 2-2 two, two the count. 5-1 to score, Rutland. With the lead on their home turf, St. Peter's Field on Munger Vision on Channel 15 Sports. Got him, so an even dozen for strikeouts for Matt Sharon. That'll end the ball game. Rutland post 31 will have a 5 to 1 win. The big hit was the home run by Ricky Dow out there, and again, just a good effort by the whole team. And, and Bells Falls, a quality club. Get out there, support American Legion baseball action, support Munger Vision, and, and God bless America.